Okay. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajim. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اقرأ بسم ربك الذي خلق خلق الإنسان من علق اقرأ وربك الأكرم الذي علم بالقلم علم الإنسان ما لم يعلم Finished up until verse number five last week. Is that correct? Um, the whole idea of the initial revelation, what took place, what it meant, right? The importance of um, of revealed knowledge in light of uh, you know the broader spectrum of knowledge as a whole, um, and how this revelation, the Quran, gives us access to knowledge that we would otherwise not have any ability to. Uh, to access of our own accord. We can't arrive at it via our minds. We cannot, you know, gain access to it empirically via our senses of perception. The only way we can get it is if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gifts it to us. And uh, this is what sets us apart from all other creatures. And it's also what sets us apart from, it also, it's, it's also what sets us apart from uh, other human beings that do not accept this divine, uh, this divine revelation. So now we move on in the surah. First, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala was speaking about Iqra. Allah couched that discussion about reciting, reading, about revelation in the idea that it all emanates from Allah and it also calls to our mind the idea of Tawheed, of the oneness of Allah. That's what we discussed in the past weeks, right? Is that correct? As you will see, all of these things here, they indicate to Allah, Iqra, what must be recited? Right? So, we, we looked at that already and we said it could be that you must recite Bismillah rahman rahim etc. You must recite Bismillah. Or it could be you must, it's just a general command, recite. But then this, it's, the thing is replete with references to Allah. Bismi Rabbik, Allah. Alladhi khalaq is again Allah. Khala, khalaq Allah al-insan. Allah created al-insan min alaq. Iqra wa rabbuka al-akram again. Reference to Rabbuk. Alladhi allama bil qalam. The one who taught bil qalam. Again, who is the fa'al of allama? Allah. Allama al-insana ma lam ya'lam. Now it changes to Allah and creation, but who is the fa'al of allama? Still Allah. So it's like saying that the source of that which sets you, human beings, apart from other creatures is a gift from Allah. It's all from Allah. Allah gave you your life, Allah gave you your creation, Allah gave you your intellect, Allah gave you knowledge as well, Allah gave you access to divine knowledge or revealed knowledge, and you know, all from Allah. So the focus is on, uh, on knowledge, the focus is on Allah, the focus is on the revelation. Now Allah switches to human beings. Allah, Allah has given you knowledge. Allah has given you guidance. Now, what is it that human beings give back? What is the, for first my question is, what's the expectation when Allah gives you this guidance? To follow on the guidance? The expectation is that you act. How do you act? According to the guidance. So the rest of the surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives an example, basically. He gives us two examples. Um, the example of a person who acts contrary to the guidance, who rejects the guidance, and a person that acts in accordance with the guidance. Um, the Mufassirin say that the one is referring, obviously, the, the one that acts in accordance with the guidance is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And the one that goes contrary to the guidance is uh, Abu Jahl. Abu Jahl, when he uh, basically kind of 
insulted and attacked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as we will see. And then, so there's this, there's this idea of Allah, the source of knowledge, and Allah, the all-encompassing knowledge as we will come to see. Then there's the idea of how human beings interact with that knowledge that Allah gives them. And then Allah ends it off in, well, what's the result? What's the result of the one who rejects this knowledge? So how does Allah's ilm and power culminate in the consequences of that person? We will see that in the Surah So Allah says, Yimuzan, Kallah, inna al-insana layatuha. Allah says, kalla. What does kalla mean? Well, isn't it a negation or a no? Yes, that's exactly what it is. It's a, uh, a negation, or we translate it as, as a, yeah, nay. No, it isn't. It's a, to, to repel something. Kalima to radda'in. Or, or deterrent or to check. That's what it is. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kalla, no. But now, what does the no mean in this context here? It's, it's almost as if Allah is negating. <laughs> he taught mankind what, what, uh, what he's supposed to be doing. But no. He doesn't do that. Allah has given him knowledge, but no. He doesn't act according to that knowledge. Kalla. No. What? So after Allah says this, Kalla, you can almost imagine it as a as it was a family, kalla, inna al-insana la yatuha. Inna means, inna means indeed, right? So Allah says, inna al-insana, indeed, insan, mankind. But again, remember, we have different words for mankind. Insan is the one that's like, almost refers to them as individuals. Inna al-insana, indeed, man, or human beings, la yatuha. Cert, this lamia is for emphasis. Indeed, mankind la certainly. So this, this is almost adding emphasis. The kalla, then we have the inna adding emphasis. Then the lam is also adding emphasis. Taha yatha means what? To transgress. To transgress. To go beyond the bounds. Right and. In context of Allah's law, etc., the sturyan going beyond the bounds means not, not uh, observing the boundaries set by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? So by not Allah creates a boundary of what is permissible for you, then you go beyond that. That's sturyan, transgression. That's what Allah says. Kalla inna al insana yatra nay. Certainly, or indeed, mankind. Okay, I don't know how to put this in. Nay, indeed, mankind certainly transgresses. It doesn't sound right when I when I add so many particles of emphasis or, or words of, to emphasize in English, but in Arabic it, it makes perfect sense, right? You just have that much emphasis in the in this case. Kalla inna al insana yatuha. Nay, indeed, man transgresses. Human beings transgress. Why is it that mankind transgresses? And yeah, you can understand this as almost as because. And that ra'ahu. Ra'a yara. We have a hand up question. Uh, is that a hand up, Yumna? Okay. If you if you'd like to speak, then you may uh, just unmute yourself and and speak in the time. Otherwise, it's fine. I'll carry on. So, what does ra'a mean? Ra'a yara means to to see. Now the question is, ra'a is a verb. Who is the fa'il of the verb? Usually it's written like this. So may have been strange to you to see it differently. 
رائع yes written differently this is the verb yes is written like this but the who is attached at the end so what does this mean who is the fa'il and who is the or what is the maf'ul remember whenever we have a verb a transitive verb we're looking for the fa'il and we're looking for the maf'ul Maulana the fa'il is inside what he sees right good so how do we look for the file firstly we see we look on the verb that who at the end is not on the verb right that's a dhammi that's attached to the end of it so there's nothing on it oh yeah you guys call it at the end. there's nothing at the end of it no do at the end of it then we look to the left is is not definitely not that that's actually another verb then we left with inside Inside the ra'a is he. So he sees. What does he see? He sees him. That who is the maf'ul bihi? He sees him, meaning he sees himself. Istaghna. Istaghna. What does that mean? What's the root letters of it first? Again, this is a verb form you haven't done yet. The root letters are ghayn. Ghayn. Yeah. What does that mean? You know a word from that? Ghani. You know what's Ghani? Ghani means somebody that's rich or free of need. To be Ghani means to be free of need or to be rich, to be independent. Right? So when we say we mean because he sees himself as being self-sufficient. He sees himself as being independent. He sees himself as being not in need. That's what it means. That's why one of the names of Allah is Al-Ghani. Or we read in the Quran that, you know, we are fuqara ila Allah. We are faqir. A faqir is what, like, Okay, we may have come across the word faqir and, and also possibly ghani. Some people have the surname ghani, ghani. It's usually ghani and also faqir. Faqir means somebody that is poverty stricken, somebody that's in dire need. That's a faqir. The opposite of that is a ghani. Um, ghani is one that has no need, faqir is one that is in dire need. Those are two opposites. So in the Quran, Allah tells us that we are fuqara'u ila Allah. We are. We are in dire need of Allah. But Allah says, yeah, man transgresses. Man transgresses. Kalla inna al-insana la yatuha. Arra'ahu staghna. Because he sees himself self-sufficient. He sees himself as rich, not in need of anything. Yeah, I don't mean just rich in terms of money. He just, he thinks he doesn't have any need. And then Allah says, Inna ila rabbika ruja'a. Inna. Indeed, ila rabbika. Ila means to. Harful jar. Right? Harful jar is always followed by you. Ismul majroor. Ismul majroor. And that's the idea. And then we have a mudaf related to that as well. Indeed, to your Lord is a ruja'a. A ruja'a, you can see the root letters of that. What's the root letters? Raja'a. That's exactly it. Raja'a means to return. A ruja'a will be in the place of return or the return. Inna ila rabbika ruja'a. Certainly. To your Lord is a ruja'a, the final place of return. The place of Maulana, Maulana is that a uh, uh, ruja'a? Is that a uh, uh, ismul mazghul? Ismul? Mazghul, ruja'a. Ismul mazghul, what is that? I'm not sure what I'm going to say. Yeah, all right, no problem. I'm just... It's a... It, 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 it's a... It's a... It's a uh, it is the feminine form it. of a sirah to tafdil. 
Deixa eu ver. Maulana, um, the brother is referring to um, actually the verb from the Majhul verb. Oh, the Majhul. No, no, no. Majhul, Majhul. No, no, no. no sorry. Not, this is not Majhul. No. This is an isim. You can see it starts with the Al. Mm. Remember, if it starts with the Al, then it's not going to be a verb. Okay. But if it has Al at the end. This word here is actually from the form it's an isim on the form fu'ala ruja'a and that's usually a uh tafdi like we have akbar um like we have akbar means greater and then if you put a al it means al akbar yeah this would be referring to it would be like the feminine form that ruja'a the final place of return the greatest place of return is to your Lord. Um, but no, this is a noun. This is an ism. This is an ism of their own. And uh, the sentence structure is actually a bit changed. This would be the subject of your sentence. And then this would be the predicate. So the final return is to your Lord. Inna ila rabbika ruja'a. Now, how does that follow on from what was said previously? Sorry, how does that follow on from what was said previously? Allah says that he gave man all of this knowledge and he taught him what he didn't know. But then Allah says, no, man, he transgresses. He transgresses. Why does he transgress? Because he sees himself independent, self-sufficient. He doesn't need anything else. He doesn't need Allah. But then Allah says, Inna ila rabbika ruja'a. But he's eventually going to return to Allah. Now, these are very short verses, but loaded with meaning. So much meaning, subhanallah. There's so much meaning in the verse itself, and then there's so much indications in the verse itself. Like, you know, we were talking about, we were talking about, um, you know, in, in what I was mentioning before we started with, uh, well, with our Mankasara section, we were talking about this idea of all of these various isms, right? And again, what you find common in all of those isms is that the main source of information or the, the source of the worldview, source of knowledge, is the human being himself. He comes up with it himself because he doesn't see need for any other uh, source of knowledge. So when we think of somebody being ghani or, 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 or mustaghnin, then we think of him having money. Oh, he has money to get himself out of uh, situations. He has means to, uh, to, to, to protect himself or to look after himself. But we, we oftentimes don't think about it in terms of a person thinking that he, you know, becoming arrogant in his thought. We don't think of it as a person becoming arrogant in his thought. And so this verse is, in, is teaching us that yes, a person transgresses, he may be transgressing because he thinks himself free of need. He thinks himself independent. You may think he thinks himself independent because he has wealth and so he thinks he can do that what he wants to. But sometimes people also become arrogant in terms of their thought and they think, I don't need the guidance of Allah to tell me. Or the guidance of Allah tells me something, but I can think for myself. That is also a, a, that is also a form of this, of this uh, thinking or deeming oneself independent, both are very, very problematic. So that's one of the isharat there as well. But you must remember, do what you want to do, have what you want to have, think about yourself what you want to think about yourself. At the end of the day, you're going to return to Allah, you're going to be in the court of Allah. And in the court of Allah, no bribes are accepted. That you cannot, uh, no matter how much money you have, no matter how intelligent you are, no matter how much you think of yourself, Right? No matter how independent you think yourself, on that day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the final judge and nobody will be able to uh, do anything about it. Now, there's like a, there's a bit of a um, uh, <clears throat> contradictory sentiment, I don't want to call it oxymoron here, but like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that man transgresses because he thinks himself independent. He thinks he doesn't need anything. 
But then Allah in the Messenger says, Inna ila rabbika. Indeed to your Lord, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Inna ila rabbika. Indeed to your Lord. Rabbika is your Lord. When we have, when we have second person, your in the Quran and it's singular, then it usually refers to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So it's Allah speaking to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, Indeed to your Lord, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a ruja'ah, is the return. So there's that element of accountability and fear being created in the mind. That we must go back to Allah for reckoning and consequences, etc. But at the same time, there's the element of compassion because Allah refers to himself as, you know, your Rabb, your nurturer, your cherisher, your sustainer. So for the one who accepts Allah as that, when he returns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the return is not bad. The return is not bad because he knows, look, he's been trying. And the one that nourishes and sustains and cherishes him, he won't punish him if he's trying. But as for the one that doesn't believe, he doesn't believe that Allah is his nourisher, Allah is his cherisher, Allah is his sustainer, then that return is a, is a, is a, is a, is a, a frightening thing. Because he expected that there's going to be no consequences to his actions, but now he finds that there are, that there are consequences to his actions, to his arrogance. So Allah says, Inna ila rabbika ruja'a. And now Allah is going to give the example of that person. Allah says, Do you see the one who prevents the slave when he prays? We will look at that next week, we in there for now. Are there any questions? Actually, let's first conclude uh, the class, and then if anybody has any questions, you can ask. We in there, what is Akum Law Kharan, wa Akhul Dawana, and Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Assalamu Alaikum, wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. You may leave. And if you have a question, you may. Assalamu alaikum. Have a good weekend. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. 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 Wa alaikum All right, then I'm back with you, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.